how you do it. <gasps> you have scared the tarnation out of me. Have you ever wondered what goes on in your body when you're scared? Girls, it appears that our intergalactic neighbors are settling in. And they're like the first of their kind to move to Earth, so we're kind of lucky. Should we like bring them cookies or are they gonna zap us with their laser eyes? I mean, I follow the one in the pink onesie on social media and she is always trying to twerk. It is hysterical. I think her name is like Bon Bon Bit Bob. They seem nice enough. I mean, I talked to the one with green hair and she didn't laser eye me or anything. Be still, there's a bee right around your head. I'm hunting for some sweet nectar. Y'all got anything good up in here? No need to get in my face. There's no flowers right here. Best go on, B, or I'm gonna smack you. Grandma, don't. Bees are pollinators. Like, they're vital to the ecosystem. We cannot kill them. Whitney's right. If all of the bees in the world died at once, the human race might only survive four years. Bees will pollinate 75% of our flowers and 35% of our crops. Eat bugs are tasty. Did you seriously just eat that bee? Here's that way. Bum bum bit bum. Did you just consume that flying creature? No, Mama Mitmup. I don't know what you're talking about. I simply came over to say hello to our earthling neighbors who reside in the structure next to us. Why do I detect you are lying? Well, I suppose you are our new neighbors. My name is Barb, and this is my daughter, Dr. Bond. She's a scientist. Hello, nice to meet you. And over there on the couch is my granddaughter, Whitney. She owns a technology company, and she is here all day. She works from home. Why did you just look like you were going to shut your brain down due to discomfort? You put your mouth like this, and your eyes roll back into the eye holes. Mum, I do believe that she was doing one of those expressions that we learned about. Like, as if she was displeased that her granddaughter is here. Thanks, Grandma. Jeez. And my great-granddaughter, Lauren, seems to be stuck in the house because of that bee that was harassing us. Oh, hun, stop. Come say hello to our new neighbors. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Where's that bee? I am Mama Mitmop, and this is my doctor, Bum Bum Bip Bop. Oot, I have another doctor named Ree Ree Rip Rop. Oot, a hair-covered meteor creature. I suppose it's like what you call dogs on Earth. His name is Dog Dog Dip Dog. <coughs> I think I might be dying, y'all. My heart is about to escape my throat. I'm so thirsty. Let's go to my lab. So let's dive in with what's going on with Lauren. She's fine, by the way. She's just a bit overdramatic. So the nervous system is the body's command center. It's comprised of the brain, spinal cord, and nerves that travel out into the body. Here's how it's organized. It's divided into the central nervous system, or CNS, and peripheral nervous system, PNS. The CNS is the brain and the spinal cord, while the PNS is the neural tissues outside the CNS, the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves, and peripheral ganglia, which is a collection of nerve cell bodies. The PNS is also broken down into the somatic nervous system, or the SNS, and the autonomic nervous system, the ANS. The somatic nervous system is voluntary and has the sensory and the motor nerves. Somatic sensory nerves carry the sensory information from the skin, joints, and muscles to the CNS. Oh, is this your laboratory? Who are you speaking to? Oh, I see. Well, if you don't make it more interesting, we're all gonna fall asleep. <laughs> see you okay, later. Thanks. 
The autonomic nervous system only has the motor nerves, which control involuntary function of the body viscera or the internal organs, like the smooth and the cardiac muscles and your glands. The ANS is subdivided into the sympathetic nervous system or the SANS and the parasympathetic nervous system, PANS. These systems oppose each other and their synchronized activity maintains what we call homeostasis. In this episode, we're focusing on the sympathetic nervous system. Just know that the parasympathetic will function to undo what the sympathetic does once the threat is gone. When Lauren got scared, she triggered her sympathetic nervous system, which controls what we call fight or flight response to stress. It gives the body what it needs to handle a crisis. In this case, the crisis was the B. So once the sympathetic nervous system is triggered, there are two ways the message gets out. The nervous system has direct connections and the endocrine system, which sends chemical signals out into the bloodstream. The neural pathway is like this. When Lauren got scared of the bee, the brain sent the signal via what we call action potentials down the spinal cord and to the preganglionic neural axons to the ganglia. Inside the ganglia is where the neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, or we call it ACH for short. It releases across the synapse where the presynaptic neuron meets the postsynaptic neuron. There's a little cleft or a space and it will travel via diffusion. So this is the way it will communicate across the synapse and it will stimulate the postganglionic fibers which carry the action potential or the signal to the effector organs. The endocrine system needs to help out. The spinal cord also has a neural pathway to the adrenal gland where it uses acetylcholine to message the adrenal medulla. In the adrenal gland, we have a cortex and a medulla to release a flood of epinephrine. Another word for that that the UK uses, you might have heard before, adrenaline. So we release epinephrine or norepinephrine hormones. We're going to call them hormones because we're releasing them to target a distant tissue or maybe not distant. It could be near, but it's going to be not via a synapse. Oh yeah. I forgot to mention, sometimes a chemical such as norepinephrine can act as a neurotransmitter and also a hormone. It's going to depend on how it's being used. If it's across a synapse, it's a neurotransmitter. If it's secreted by a gland into the bloodstream for widespread distribution, it's a hormone. Also, what message it sends to the effector organ will depend upon which receptor is there. Let's go to Organ City to see the playback of what happened inside of Lauren when she saw the bee. May I have your attention, please? Lauren has seen a bee. The sympathetic nervous system has engaged the fight or flight response and has sent signals via the thoracolumbar region of our spinal cord to the heart, blood vessels, bronchi, and gastrointestinal tract. I've released the necessary neurotransmitters, but need some hormones released at once to coordinate our response. Adrenal glands, do you copy? I don't mind speaking for them since they sit on me. They said that they copy and they're busy right now making the cat's cholamine hormones you asked for. But they wanted me to ask you if you're okay with all the side effects, such as constipation, anorexia, difficulty urinating, and suppression of immunity. Are you okay with that? It won't be long-term, silly. It's a B. We're okay to proceed. I've dilated the pupils to let in max light so Lauren can see better. I've instructed the sweat glands to secrete sweat to counteract the body's upcoming rise in temperature. And I've directly sent instructions to each organ system. Organ system leaders, please report your status. Let's start with the cardiovascular system. Heart... I've increased my rate so I could get more oxygen and nutrients and signals to the muscles and glands. Have we decided whether we're going to fight or run from the bee brain? We are running. It would be too difficult to slap the tiny bee's face. It has the advantage in this scenario and we don't want Lauren to get stung. Ugh. 
When pain receptors are activated, Lauren cries a long time for attention. And don't look at me, it's in her DNA. I can't do any override. Lungs, please check in. The beta-2 receptors of my smooth muscles obviously got your signal. We increased the diameter of our airways. We increased the respiratory rate. She should be panting like a dog now. Digestive system. So, I'm gonna speak for the digestive system, except for the liver. They can speak for themselves. We've halted peristalsis, which is the wave-like contractions of the smooth muscle that propels the food down the tract. It's kind of like a snake. We've also decreased our digestive enzyme secretion, so we pretty much halted all digestion. We need to save the energy for Lauren to fight that bee. She did scarf down a cheeseburger about 15 minutes ago, and I'll hold on to it for now, but if this thing goes on too long, I'm gonna send it up because I don't like it when food's in here and it starts to stink. So for now, we're just gonna watch Nerve Flicks and chill. Liver here. My sinusoids are contracted. I've shut down my part of digestion, but I'm breaking into my sugar storage to break it down for immediate energy. Kidneys, please check in. I have increased the blood pressure as you requested, brain, and the adrenal glands have let me know that they are sending the signals as you requested. They are shutting down the salivary gland secretions so we can conserve water, and the bladder is relaxed. She will not contract until we are rest. Let's go ahead and check in on Lauren. It appears she has invaded the bee. Good work, everyone. As you can see, the nervous system and the adrenal glands work together to get the message out to Lauren's body to shut down digestion for the heart and lungs to get more oxygen carrying blood to the vital organs needed for the great escape. This is why Lauren's heart rate and breathing rates increased and she's thirsty because of the salivary gland shutdown. The liver worked hard to get more sugars in the blood for Lauren's body to use as energy. By now, the nervous system will work to get Lauren calmed down. She might want to get a glass of water to cure that thirst. Well, hun, I just don't know what to say to a gal from outer space, so what do you do for a living? I don't know what you mean by living. Are you asking how our structures work? Because our structures are far more superior than the athletes. Okay, for example, I'm a high school principal and I go to work from Monday through Friday and they give me a salary and I pay the bills because none of these heathens chip in and pay for anything. I protect the earth. I am paid by the Intergalactic Commission. A hefty stipend. I was protecting it on my spaceship but my daughters kept stealing it and causing disasters like floods and hurricanes. So, I am making them live here on Earth until they learn a lesson. Well, that makes perfect sense, I guess. I have caused quite a few thunderstorms in this area. Did that scare you? That's kind of rude, but it does help me sleep better, TBH. Are you on Snapchat? That is an Earthling social media company, so no. I was on TikTok for a while, and I posted a twerking video. I learned your stupid dance, and I got a bunch of haters. Were you one of my haters? I follow you. Chill. Okay, then. When I take over the Earth as the Queen Bee, I'll take care of you. You're taking over the Earth? Well, not immediately. Mama Mipmop will not allow it. For now. I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Dr. Bond's World. Join us next time when we discuss the various colors of snot and poo and what the changes mean for your health. Lauren might get infected by Gina Germ, and Bon Bon Bip Bop will get into a lot of trouble. Don't forget, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss an episode. The episodes will be released every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central. We see you next week.